Hello world, this is Shruti Pandey and today I have with me Richard Bradshaw, the boss boss or the CEO of Ministry of Testing. Uh, it is very special for me for very, very many ways, um, not just because we had Diwali going by, but I actually for the past two days have been waiting for this conversation to happen and recording a podcast with Richard, like I uh, told him a few moments earlier uh, and sharing, you know, the same camaraderie and the same lineage of testing it is what makes it more special uh, plus this is an era or this is a time when we see a lot many communities in around upon testing but there was a time a couple of years back maybe a decade back when there were no communities especially in India for testing um, so when I first got to know about ministry of testing way back around 2009 or something I, I felt really envious of this community and a little missed out on the fact that why do we have such things in India and today we have so many of them that I think the dev developer community would be envious of the number of test <laughs> communities we have in India so without a further ado thank you so much Richard and I am sorry for that long introduction for you and Ministry of Testing but I just love you both <laughs> really <laughs> although that's incredible like you know like thank you for having me it's um really looking forward to this because yeah the you know i'm not sure what you got planned i'm not sure what you're going to ask me but the, the story behind myself and ministry of testing is quite interesting and obviously i know from my own experience that ministry of testing has had such an impact on so many people's careers because i'm one of them right like i didn't start it rosie started it but it, i found it a bit like you mentioned it and it just kept giving and giving and giving to me. And now, obviously, I, I run it. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Pleasure to meet you. I appreciate your modesty. And it's likewise an extreme pleasure for me also to meet you. Um, and shall I just dive into my questions uh, then? I have created sure. four of them for you. And I would love to know more about the story. Because like you rightly mentioned, there is so much uh, behind the scenes in front of the scenes about Ministry of Testing and you, uh, of course. So my first question for you is, what does it even feel like to be a part of Ministry of Testing? <laughs> I feel like I should ask you that question. Um, but I assume you mean like part of the team um, behind Ministry of Testing, because I think that's the interesting thing, like running a community business, I, I've never run really any other type of business, but as a community business, it's I'm as very much as part of my product as I am responsible for designing the product. And that makes it really interesting. Like I'm not designing a product that I don't use. Um, so, you know, if we're, if we're designing events, new initiatives, content ideas, they're usually coming from the fact that I want to digest them or see them as a member of Ministry of Testing very much as I am the forefront. So, yeah, it's really fascinating because we, uh, as I said, I've, I've been using Ministry of Testing, uh, I think I think I first stumbled across it in 2012, maybe 2011, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and, you know, like you said, I, I had no idea that there was communities. I didn't know people spoke about testing. I didn't know there was books about testing, like it was just my job. And then all of a sudden, I discovered this incredible group of people who were so open, so welcoming willing to share time and content and insights and like it just became this place that was like yeah just a place to learn and connect and it was incredible and obviously now I get I still have that but now I'm also got the pressure and the responsibility of how do you keep it going so yeah it's an incredibly creative job it's a great pleasure to be able to create opportunities for people to connect and learn and share and I'm guessing that's that's the kind of the the other side of it now I I get to shape and design the way that we want or be where we but to provide opportunities for people to connect like we you know like you said yourself when you come stumbled across it when I stumbled across it so I I, I know what the product needs to do because I felt it and I've been involved in it and I now get to do that with an awesome team so yeah <clears throat> that is so amazing you know to hear from a person who is day in day out doing this task because uh Sometimes I feel in, in this, you know, 
technolo technology age where we are getting into very flashy salesy marketing stuff there are times yeah. when you know there is a very thin line between community and how they operate and the ethos and values they used to represent for so i i really appreciate your thoughts on how the community should be and how your journey has also been uh with respect to uh ministry of testing i i also want to further dwell into this part and understand from you because uh you probably joined in uh the team or the community as the ceo or boss boss around 2016 or 15 correct me if i'm wrong It's nearly it's five years this year, so I think it was the the end of twenty seventeen, the start of twenty eighteen, if I remember correctly. Right. So, so that yeah. official, you know, getting you on the ship and the board and carrying on the legacy. How, how did that really happen? How did you come into the official picture of MOT? Well, I so I actually, <clears throat> well, is, yeah, I didn't. I was more involved before I became boss boss. So. What actually happened was there was Test Bash, which is our software testing conference, and that was taking place in Brighton every year. Now I don't know how much you know the UK, but I live in Manchester, and Brighton is a four-hour drive or like a five-hour train journey, which I know in India terms is not very far, <laughs> but in, in UK terms, incredibly far. Um, and yeah, it was my. Um, I thought I said to Rosie, you know, I went to Test Bash I think twice or maybe three times in a row, and I was like, loving this. This is a great format. And I was like, Rosie, can we do this in Manchester? Right. And Rosie, the founder of Ministry of Testing, um, she turned around and basically said, Well, if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, <laughs> then um, I'm happy for you to try and do this in Manchester. So I went, Well, I'll definitely do that. So I started Test Bash Manchester, and that was my only involvement with Rosie to start with. I, I'd run a meetup prior to that. So, you know, I was contributing to MOT. I'd spoken, but as that's as a member of the community, and then um, I'd kind of officially worked for MOT when I did Test Bash Manchester, and I think I did two or three. I can't remember exactly. And me and my partner went traveling. So we just we'd already planned that we were going to have this um, six months of traveling around the world, and we um, when we started traveling, obviously it was away from I think UK had finished, and then we went traveling. Um, sorry, Test Bash Manchester had just happened, and then we went traveling. And while we were traveling, like Ministry of Testing was growing just outside of Manchester, so there was already talks of like Test Bash Germany, Test Bash USA. And I got a message from Rosie, and she was like, "Look, I know you're traveling, but obviously, when you're traveling, right, you've got the odd bit of time here and there." She was like, "Can you help me, you know, in the day or in the evenings to do more work for MOT, and I'll pay you while you're traveling?" And it was like, "Well, this is amazing! Like, I get to travel the world, and I get to do work at the same time." So, me, me, and my partner Sarah, who also works at Ministry of Testing now. Um, we started just doing things in the evening, you know, helping write emails, review things, managing tickets and stuff like this. And then, yeah, when I came back, um, it be kind of became like a, a full time job. Rosie needed more and more help, and I started. It, essentially, I was contracting for Ministry of Testing, and so was Sarah. And then it, <clears throat> it got to a point where financially, and you know, um. That tax reasons and just like it was more noise for me to continue contracting, and I really started to feel like you know what I I might enjoy working for MOT full time as opposed to you know doing the testing and consulting that I was doing prior um, to traveling, and then I did, and then yeah, it became this point where Rosie had kind of reached the the level of interest. Like I, like Rosie's very much about community; she loves community, but in terms of her background in testing and her desire to keep learning about testing that had started to fade so Rosie was like actually I'm not as invested in the topic of this community anymore um would you like to take the reins and at first I was like no absolutely not um <laughs> and the reason is because I'd I'd shied away from management jobs my whole career so As I was going from testing job to testing job, obviously the next step to earn more money and things was to be a manager. But I didn't really want to manage people. It wasn't. I liked being hands on. I liked testing. I liked automating. 
So I tried a manager job, but I didn't like it. So then I ended up consulting. So then I started my own company and started contracting and consulting. So I didn't have to be a manager. And you usually get paid more if you're contracting and consulting. Um, and then, yeah, when then Rosie said this, do you want to do this? I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, I don't. <laughs> um, but then I thought about it some more. And, you know, there's a few, you know, the topic of your podcast, like that it was a great opportunity for me to lead a business that was established. So, you know, in terms of like a rare opportunity to actually, you know, I could do a startup, right? You could do startups and, and there's so much work, there's so much stress and risk. Um, but then this was a company that was established. It was profitable. It was working. You know, there was the models in place that made sense. So it was like actually to lead something that had had such a profound impact on my own life and my own career that I couldn't turn it down. And, you know, the way I've been able, I've been able to balance things, you know, I've still been able to do talks and training and, you know, consultancy, and I've been able to run MOT at the same time. And, um, you know, it's allowed me to be really flexible. And I think that's the, the thing that I'm glad I did it. And now it's kind of uh, the ethos that Rosie had left meant that we're, we have very good balance as a team. You know, you can work whenever you want. You can not work. You can just disappear. You can be like, hey, I've, I'm off this afternoon, right? There's no stress. There's no, like, there's no micromanagement and stuff, which still allows the, the flexibility of doing things. So, yeah, it was a tough choice, but I'm glad I did it. We're five years down the line, and, yeah, things are very different, but it's, it's going well. This really is an evolution and I want to, you know, give a big shout out to Rosie because you know, anybody in her place would probably not give away their baby. If they have put so much of blood, sweat and tears, they would probably, you know, be very skeptical about, you know, why should I leave and stuff like that. But the fact that she was so aware of the fact that, okay, this isn't serving my purpose anymore. This is not my calling anymore. Why don't you take it? And I, I love your stories because I mean, the, the first one was the travel part where you got to travel yeah. and get paid. That is, you know, that is so awesome. And then getting an opportunity like this, it's like an icing on the cake uh, for the tester is how yeah. I look at it. Uh, Especially it, pre-COVID, you know, this was pre-COVID. So the, the, the remote working scene was no way near as, you know, obviously as prevalent as it is now. Um, so, yeah, I was incredibly lucky to be able to travel and be paid at the same time. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys were the first who were starting off with stuff like this, right? Before you guys, on a massive range, I don't think so. Anybody had seen a community, especially in testing, working in such a fashion or a manner, you know. And I always feel that if you have a good competitor, you really have that, you know, desire to keep pushing yourself and giving more and delivering more. So... I'm pretty sure uh, as a tester in India, there might be so many communities who still look up to you and be like, okay, one day we need to be the IOT of India. Oh, well, yeah, but you're already on the way. I think there's the, I think, so if I just take the first part of what you said, that there was, there was always competition or there was, there was events. I think that's the difference. There was conferences. So there was conferences that existed. There were, there was working groups but they were like a close knit kind of invited um, group. And then you had the conferences where people obviously stayed connected, but the conference wasn't really facilitating that. The conference was, Hey, you know, come to our, come to our conference for five days in the year, you'll meet people. But then the rest of the year, they weren't really doing things to keep you connected. It was kind of nothing. And then, Hey, conference is coming back again, buy a ticket and come back. Whereas I think Rosie and, what was the software testing club um, was kind of the first to really embrace community. And the main core of the business is community. And then they added conferences and forums and training. And, but at the core, we're still a community, whereas a lot of events or other established things at their core, they're a conference. You take the conference away and they don't work. You take our conference away and we still work obviously COVID like proved that. So I think that's the difference with a lot of initiatives, but in India now you've got, um, I was chatting to him the other day, I forget his name, Marrakesh, maybe uh, test tribe. Yes. So the, yeah, the test tribe are doing wonderful things. I've been chatting to them and following them, you know, the whole test flicks 
uh, conference format I think is genius um, and again I know that they're you know doing their own thing and it, again it's it's great to see because like you said it I the more competition the better the only reason I feel that is not enough people in our industry still know that communities are a thing so MOT is only going to be able to reach so many people because we can only invest our efforts and we only have so many users and so forth. Our reach is this big. Um, and then someone else comes along and they start growing their reach and someone else. Eventually, people will know it's a thing to go for. And at that point, they can then decide which one's best for them. Like for I know, for example, Ministry of Testing outside of the website, we don't really serve India very well. Most of our events aren't in an India-friendly time zone. We don't have a conference in India. We have a few meetups in India, um, but and we don't have any content in like native Indian um, languages or you know, languages from India. Whereas the testing tribe and some of the other things, they're much more tailored to that market. But then they're obviously not as tailored to the UK or the Europe or the US markets. And that's my point. That we need more. At that point, we can start, um, people are aware it's a thing. And I think as a business, as an industry, yes. we will start to see rapid improvement in the quality of testers, quality people, the training, uh, the initiatives that make it more of a, a career people like are aware of yep. if we have more communities. I think that, that, that will definitely be the case. So I have actually interviewed about three of Indians who have community like you already talked about test drive so Mahesh has actually left his testing career and become a founder yeah. like an official mm -hmm. founder and that's his full-time job and there are two more so when I interviewed all these three I asked them a constant question why don't we have a club and a single community right like why do we need three different things rather than having one? So uh, I think understanding from them, it still seems like it's going to be that way. But I absolutely love your idea that the more we grow, the more we can probably then reach to e reach out to each other and become like a big circle of testing people, which is what I have been thinking and striving for. And I absolutely love the fact that you have such good things to uh, say about these testing communities that we have here in India because you know there, there came a point where I was having a conversation a couple of months back with Mahesh where we were talking about everybody in the community thinks that we don't have enough voices coming to do a mm -hmm. talk or a speech or a whatever uh, conference that might be there why don't we bring the unheard voices and it's so good that you know these guys actually take in into consideration whatever advice you have for them as a community, as a person coming from the testing background. And it was an amazing thing to see Testflix be like absolutely free event really for yeah. people to uh, hook on to. And um, thank you for sharing your thoughts about the testing communities here. You have something more? But I think, yeah, to add to that point, like the reason why we need more as well, though, is like that tester, tester sentence coming, right? It's context, it depends. But the the models are all very different, right? So hypothetically, well, I don't have evidence, but I assume like the cost of living in India oh, is yeah. probably less than the UK. So therefore that allows the testing tribes business model to be different. Um, so therefore they're innate, they're able to do things slightly differently, such as something like Netflix, um, Testflix, which is obviously a free event and they went down the sponsorship route. Their sponsorship route is probably a lot lower cost than Ministry of Testing because their reach is slightly smaller at the moment uh, than ministry testings for example um but it, they get that we need more because it gives them the ability to work in their model it gives them the ability to target a specific country to start with and then like i said in turn and it's already happening people want to be a part of multiple communities and i think the challenge in the future will come and it's something that I'm considering with Ministry of Testing is at some point there needs to be a central place that shares everything that people are doing. So instead of you having to check six communities every day, we need some mechanism at some point, I feel, that would allow someone to digest the content from all the communities easily see all the events, you know, something like uh, testingconferences.org, you know, where 
um, Chris curates all the conferences. Um, I don't know what that looks like yet, but I've got, I spoke to Marrakesh. Uh, what's his name? Marrakesh? I forget Prince, his name. Yeah. Yeah, um, I spoke to him about this and I said, you know, at some point I would love MOT to be like the center of the testing community and we we help and facilitate all the other like kind of not micro communities because that's not fair, like the other, you know, established communities and maybe, you know, we can all use our website instead of us all building yeah. you know, a whole website or we can all, you know, share a call for papers system or, you know, like instead of reinventing the wheel all the time, I would like to eventually get to this point where we're sharing in a way that benefits everyone. Um, but that's a long way to go yet because, you know, <laughs> Testing Tribe's still relatively new. MOT is still, you know, we're only, what, 10, 12 years old, which in the grand scheme. And we were, you know, we were a one-person company for five six years of that so you know it's still quite in its infancy as well so but yeah the more my opinion right now the more the better the more reach we'll have as an industry the more new voices we'll hear the more cool initiatives and content ideas that will come out of it whereas if you have just one it, you're limited by the business model of that one as well as the creative minds that are in that one entity um so over time it will become a bit stagnant if you're not being fed or you know um, encouraged by competitors that are coming you know like I've looked at test flex and been like oh could we do something like that but it's like well actually we've tried something like that in the past it didn't quite fit with what we do they've managed to do it I would rather tell people to go watch test flex so you know there's no point in me trying to do something like it because it's done now they're doing it it works it's good send people there instead <clears throat> Absolutely. No, this is, you know, I think I kind of digressed and I'm not sure how we went into all these communities, especially this one that we've been talking about. But like I was mentioning a little while earlier, I spoke to about three of them and I yeah. asked this constant question to all the three of them. Why can't we just merge into one big, you know, family, community, whatever they might want to call. And always there was, you know, trying to running around the bush and saying a no, basically, but I'm glad you talked about this at length and you are actually giving me some hope that maybe not now in a couple of years, this is going to happen. So, you know how in companies we used to have something called as a testing center of excellence kind of a thing, which is yeah. common to everybody, <laughs> something like that might happen. Not sure what shape or form, but it absolutely makes sense to why not uh, help each other, utilize the resources that are already there rather than creating the same thing and becoming redundant. So absolutely, absolutely love your pointers. And I feel like I need to have another one, another session with you right? <laughs> talk about, you know, how do we create a testing community and a playbook around it? Because I'm pretty sure you have so much to share. <laughs> yeah, or maybe, but the, the other side of it is if they're doing business well, just like any other business, people will start to buy them. So for example, hypothetically, right, I might, I might raise money and buy Test Drive. So I'll leave it to run on its own. But I, I'm saying that's what will actually happen. So, you know, I don't think we'll see the morphing of one. What I do think we will see is communities buying each other because they're a business at the end of the day uh, and then maybe even you know some of the test tools and vendors might start buying them because instead of trying to start a community from scratch yeah. they might as well buy an established one and yep. you know at the end of the day everyone who starts a business usually is building one to eventually leave it right so you know the people are starting these communities but as with what happened with Rosie their interest will eventually start to waver and they will look to buy it and sell it. So I definitely expect to see communities buying communities in the future and conferences buying communities and tool vendors buying communities. Like it will happen um, because if they get their businesses right and they're profitable, yeah. why is that any different than, you know, Adidas buying, a, you know, a, a shoe <laughs> manufacturer or something like that. So. <clears throat> 
Absolutely. It only makes sense. And, you know, sometimes as a tester, as a part of a community, I feel like I'm torn between, you know, locations. And why should I be doing that? I mean, we are close to 2023. And the pandemic has taught us that all of us can just hop on a Zoom, just go on online on some yep. platform, AirMeet or whatever that might be. And there are conferences happening online. There are uh, meetups happening online. So, um, you know, there are moments, which is why that question always uh, remains a constant for from me for testing communities like we need to get together because I as a tester I'm torn apart like okay because I'm in India I should be a part of this one and because I'm not in India I can't be a part of MOT like that is sad <laughs> I understand yep. there are location constraints but it doesn't matter really anymore right so I would be looking forward to a real full-fledged MOT chapter of India I would be so happy I would be probably the first one to join it <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, hopefully, if things continue to stabilize, you know, post the pandemic, we can start to have a proper, comfortable, more predictable um, place and we can, you know, see what happens. Fingers crossed. So I want to understand two more things from you. Sure. And yeah. uh, my, my one question being is, uh, do you ever miss testing because you left that space, you know, and got into yeah. the full fledged zone of boss boss so do you ever miss your testing days does that ever happen yeah absolutely so I miss I probably miss software development more than I miss testing which is funny because again I've been able to shape my role at ministry of testing now where I actually spend quite a lot of time building the ministry of testing website <clears throat> so uh, to some extent I build most of our front end our dev boss builds the back end so I now still get to be active I get to code and I get to test now arguably a CEO shouldn't be doing that, but, you know, it's not like we're, you know, in, in company making millions of pounds and we can afford to hire tons of people. Right. So, you know, any smart company, you utilize the skills that are at the company. Um, so like, yes, I, Vernon Richards, one of my close friends, you know, he made a point a long time ago because my alias is friendly tester. He said at some point you realize that friendly tester has to die and friendly CEO has to be born because you can't continue to spend all your time learning about the craft of testing. And that's actually happening now. Like I know a lot more about running a company. I'm learning a lot more about web development and Ruby on Rails development because that's the skills that I currently need to do my job well. Whereas when I was a full-time tester, the skills I needed were obviously learning more about testing and tools. So I'm never going to detach fully because... I love the craft so much and I still feel I have a huge amount of knowledge I need to get out of myself. So me and <clears throat> me and my colleague Mark are currently working on trying to get that knowledge out. I will feel a lot more comfortable once it's codified in some way. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to finish that journey, but yeah, I do. I miss, I, you know, I do miss spending days and days testing, but at the same time I still get to do it. Um, and I, I'm now on a comfortable journey where I know I have to stop even web development at some point, but at the moment I'm able to transition. I have a plan. Whereas when I first took the job, it was kind of like <laughs> gone. So and that, that was, that, that didn't sit well with me because then I kept trying to find ways of coding and working in software. So yeah, I have purposely tweaked my own job to allow me to be a de developer to some extent or, to, you know, and to build and test MOT's website. Um, and that will work for this short while, but it's not a long-term strategy. You know, like I said, I shouldn't be building our website. I should be, I should be doing things like this. I should be on podcast every day, uh, you know, talking about the company and things. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I do miss testing, but I have a middle ground now, which I am very grateful for. The, company, the team are very, you know, respectful of it. You know, like I said, they they know I shouldn't really be doing this, but they understand that it matters. It means something to me. Uh, and we're on a, trend, you know, we're on a journey for it to end. But like the hard break was problematic for me. So this is a bit much better approach. I absolutely love all, all the answers you've given so far because in all your answers, I see, you know, there is humbleness, there is modesty, and there is lots and lots of transparency, which I absolutely appreciate. And, you know, now that I've created a podcast myself, I understand your sentiment on 
why am I going to burn on something where I can actually do this myself and I don't need to have or hire resources for something like this. So, you know, every time my engineer or engineering background comes into picture where I'm like, I can do the editing, I can do the thumbnail, I can do this. I, can. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, totally understand your sentiment. It's not about being frugal, but it's just about being wise with the thing that you're creating. So absolutely agree to that. And my final question uh, for you is, which probably is, I should have asked you this first and we were all over the place while we're talking <laughs> every time. But uh, yeah, my final question is, what do you think are, biggest challenges for community or testing community in 22 or 23? I mean, we're all almost 2023. 20, so what do you think are the biggest challenges? I think there's a few. I think the, there's, still a, there's still a bias around community that community should be free. So I think there's a, a big challenge to find working business models that allow communities to exist and function you know just as you said with your podcast um you know it costs money to have people um you know maintaining this community it doesn't happen for free so the fact that you're able to go to conferences or write articles or be a guest on a podcast all exists because someone's making that happen and that person needs paying so you know we we need to find, we need to help communities find models and we need to be willing to pay for them. You know, even if it's like obviously MOT has pro membership, right? Which is 25 pounds a month. But, you know, even if a smaller community was like a five pounds a month, we need to admit or be open that we got value from a community and be willing to pay that back with how we get value from somewhere else. So if Ministry of Testing enabled you to get a new job, and that job has £5,000 more a year pay, you sh- not saying you should immediately do it, but you should feel comfortable giving MOT a small monthly fee or annual fee because you benefited from it. Um, and whereas we still have this stigma around communities free, contents free, oh, yeah. and like, yes, there are things that are free, but their level of quality is no way near the level of a community that has a business model behind it that sustains it and supports it. So I think there's a big challenge there, um, especially around getting companies to pay for it. So I think when you go to a company and you say, can I pay to join this community? They're like, ah, I'm not sure. Whereas historically, if you, if you have any family or friends who work in uh, the science space or medical space, going in and saying, can I be a part of this society or this organization or this membership? Usually it's like, oh yeah, of course, you know, it's no brainer, it's done. Uh, You're a part of this association. Whereas with testing and software development, there's still this weird um, reluctance to pay for it. Whereas things like certificate or certification or some of the larger online learning platforms, it's kind of, yeah, sure. It's like, can I have fifteen hundred pounds to take a certificate? Yeah, no worries. Can yeah. I have two hundred pounds to be a member of MOT for the year? Absolutely not. No. How yeah. dare you ask for such a thing? Like, even though you're paying a thousand pounds for three days versus paying two hundred and fifty pounds for a whole year, yeah, companies yeah. just aren't seeing it. So that that's, I think that's the biggest challenge. And then the second one I would say very quickly is um, just education as a whole. I think as an industry we are learning far more from community than we will ever learn from certification and degrees and other traditional forms of learning. So again, I think individuals need to start realizing community is the place to learn. And then businesses need to start realizing that as well. And as similar to before and start funding people to be members of these communities, because you are going to learn and grow so much quicker. Like you can jump on MOT Slack or forum ask an incredibly complicated question and people will answer it. Whereas 20 years ago, you would have to pay hundreds of pounds for a consultant to come into your company for the day. You would literally have that one day and then they're gone. If you call them up afterwards and say, I've got another question, they'll be like, yeah, sure. It's another 200 pounds. Whereas community is giving you all this, but yet there's a reluctance to pay for it. So yeah, that's, I think the biggest challenge. I again agree wholly to both the points you mentioned. And again, like I I was mentioning earlier, I absolutely love your honesty and transparency because you just, 
uh, hit the nail on the coffin without running around the bush. I love that about you. And uh, while I don't feel like, you know, parting ways and closing this podcast, <laughs> because I genuinely feel like we need to have a part two where we discuss about how Let's to create. Do it again. Thing. Let's have a part two someday. If, sure. if you feel free and if you feel that we Absolutely. can, it, I would love to have you once again, uh, Richard, because there's so much to learn from you, not just in the testing aspect, but also the community aspect. So, uh, any parting thoughts that you may have before we wrap this up? No, if you've not joined any of the communities we've mentioned, join them, get amongst it, and get involved and make sure you subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much. It was amazing to have you on the podcast. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.